man praise. He deserves, and he deserves all of our praise. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to get into the meat of the word. Coming from the scriptures you heard read in your hearing. Amen. The book of uh, Matthew 13 chapter, verses 1 through 9. Amen. And it reads, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And a great multitude gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, mm -hmm. and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and the forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched and became, <clears throat> and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearers and doers of his holy word. Let's pray. Father God, I come in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, one more time. As an empty vessel just to be used by you, Lord. Speak to your people today. Bless them, Lord. Open their hearts, minds, and ears that they might receive your word today. Lord, that they might be edified and you be glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 I want to use for a title today. What kind of heart do you have? What kind of heart do you have? You may take the seats in the presence of the Lord. You say, well, Pastor, what do you mean what kind of heart? He was talking about sowing seeds. Yeah, but he's not talking about sowing seeds. He's talking about sowing the word of God. Amen. Amen. But the parables in the Bible, Parables in the Bible are called the greatest story that was ever told when Jesus teaches parables. Amen. 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 And, and in this one, he goes to the ship and he casts out a little ways from the shore and he begins to teach them. Amen. And uh, in verse uh, 10, his disciples came to him and they asked him why he taught them in parables. Hmm. Amen. If you look at verse 10, and, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, in verse 11, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But to them it is not given. Amen. Amen. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. But we know that parables talk about kingdom living. Amen. Amen. And, and, and because of the opposition of the Jewish leaders of that day, amen, with those who would soon crucify him, he began to teach in parables. Amen. So that those who wanted to hear, who really wanted to know, they would understand. Amen. But those who were coming and really could care less, they were coming actually to make trouble, to try to catch him in a lie or anything else they could do. They wouldn't understand it. And that's why he taught it to them in parables. So uh, the word parable, which is parabole, okay, means to play in the place of, or to place beside, okay? Uh, a parable places something unfamiliar to you with something that is familiar. Amen. What a parable does is we take something earthly, okay, and then we tell you about that that you understand. Right? And we compare it to some heavenly. Amen. Amen. That you don't understand. Amen. Amen. So a parable really is something that's earthly with a heavenly meaning. Amen. And that's what he was doing here. They understood about sowing seed. Everybody knows about sowing seed. You take a bag of seed and you go out in the field and you start casting seeds. And he says here that some fell on stony places, some fell on the wayside. Amen. Listen. 
He's not talking about secrets. Amen. He's talking about hearts. Amen. He's talking about the word of God. Okay. The sower is God. Mm -hmm. Which he explains to them in 19. Okay. The seed is the word. Amen. The soil is four different kinds of hearts. That the seed the word falls on. Okay. And he's explaining to them four <coughs> different types of hearts. There's just only four options really. Because those four hearts include you and me. Okay? Amen. And the first one, in three and four, he talks about they fell on the wayside. Okay? And the wayside depicts a hard heart. Why? Because the wayside is where the wheels and the feet, the foot traffic and the, and the, the horses walk through. Okay? And it's packed down. It's compacted. All right? And it comes hard like concrete. Mm -hmm. So there's no seed that's going to go into the soil there. Why? Because it's too hard. So this depicts a hard heart. Like I said, what kind of heart do you have? Amen. You see what I'm saying? But, but, but it, it talks about, we could call it the parable of the soils. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we could also call it the parable of hearts. Amen. 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 But there's four different kind of hearts. The first one is a hard heart, okay? Amen. Which Jesus talks about. And, and, and the seed is the word of God. So well, people of God, why is this important? I'm talking to people in the world all the time. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, very rarely will they tell me if I ask them <coughs> if they're going to heaven that they're not going. Everybody says they're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. They don't have a clue what it takes to get there. Not a clue. They don't even know what it means to be saved. Okay. Amen. So I said, well, you know, the Bible says that 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 only the pure in heart Come on. shall see God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're going to be pure in heart is you're going to have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Only the pure in heart. Right in Matthew five and eight it says, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God." Amen. We are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Our hearts are born, we, we all, our hearts are just wicked. I know you don't want to hear you say, well, Pastor, speak for yourself. My heart is not wicked. The Bible says that everyone born after the similitude of Adam and Eve mm -hmm. is born in sin. Amen. Amen. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. We have no righteousness. Because people say, oh, I got a good heart. I help people. I'm, you know, I, I don't do this and I don't rock. It has nothing to do with that. We're born separated from God. Amen. That's why Jesus said we must be born again. Amen. It's simple as that. And if you don't want to be born again, then we, we're going to have to suffer the consequences of that. But Psalm 51 and 10, that's why David said, you don't have to go there, creating me a clean heart. Yeah. And renew a right spirit within me. That's what he asked the Lord to do for him when he had sinned with Bathsheba and all these uh, ungodly things. He was a man of God. But he knew that his heart wasn't right. Amen. Matthew 15 and 19. We have to understand why he's talking about these hearts. Matthew 15 and 19 said, For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, False witness and blasphemies. You say, well, Pastor, that's not me. Amen. If you say so. Amen. Amen. That's why he said that he was going to give us. In Ezekiel 11 and 19, God said, I'm going to give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. And I will give them a heart. Of flesh. Why is he saying that? Why? You say, well, Pastor, I mean, I don't understand. That's true. Many people don't understand. Why? Because they don't know the word of God. When we don't know the word of God, what do we do? We assume something. Amen. We can assume all we want, but we can, we can be as, as, as faithful. We can believe it with our whole heart, and we can just be completely wrong. Amen. So we need to know what the word of God says. Yeah. The word of God in Jeremiah 17 and 9 and 10. We got to look at this and then I get back into the parable. 
17, 9 and 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? No one knows our heart but God. That's why the Bible said man looks at the outward appearance. We look at what people are doing on the outside. We look at how they look. He said, no, but God searches the heart. Why? Because our heart is who we are. That's who we are. Amen. That's who we are. Who can know it? Ten, I, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Amen. Amen. Now look, I want to read a scripture for you here. Proverbs 21 and 2. And I'm giving you these to get some background so you understand. Because I know that a lot of people feel like your heart is right, our heart is not right. That's why God said he has to create in us a clean heart. That's why he said I have to conform you to the image of my son. Amen. That's what the process of sanctification Amen. is. If God left us to ourselves, no, we may not go rob banks. We may not kill anybody. We may have some compassion. But our heart is still not right. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 21 and 2. Does help? Yeah, okay. So every way of a man is right in what? Yeah. Of course. If you ask me, even when I was in the world serving the devil, if I was good, I'd say, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, am I going there? Oh, yeah, I think I'm going. Why? Why am I going? Because you're asking me. Yeah. That's why. You think I'm going to tell you? Oh, no, I think I'm going to hell. No. If, if you leave it to us, we're all going to hell. But the problem is it's not our choice. It's our choice, but we're not the ones who's going to decide. Jesus is going to decide who comes in and who does not. And it's going to be according to his word. Not what we think. Not our assumption. Not how we feel. Because none of that even matters. All that's going to matter when it comes to getting into heaven is the word of God. Amen. So it would behoove us to know what the word of God says about it. And stop talking about things we know nothing about. I'm reminded of Lee Strobel. You know that uh, he was a... Um, <coughs> Well, yeah, he was a journalist. And his wife, you probably heard about the case for Christ. Lee Strobel, he wrote the book, he made the movie. But he was a journalist. And his wife, his, his child, his little girl was choking one day at a restaurant. And this, this, this lady helped her and saved her. So the lady, his wife made her a cake and she wanted to thank her. And uh, she got saved. The lady invited her to church. She came to church, she got saved. The problem was, they were atheists. Hmm. And Lee Strobel, he was a well-known atheist. You can look him up. And he told his wife, you know we don't believe in God. What are you doing? You're not giving them people our money. You're not going to church. You're not getting caught up in that cult. Hmm. And so she made a deal with him. She said, if you can prove to me that God is not real, Jesus didn't die on the cross and rise again, if you can prove all of that to me, she said, well, we won't deal with it anymore. So he set out to do that. Hmm. He set out to do that. And at the end of the day, after a few months, because he's a journalist, he went to Egypt, he, he went to Israel, he did everything. He checked it out like a journalist, because he's a man of facts, right? And so he came back home, and he said in his book, in his story, he said he, he stood before his wife, and he began to cry. And he fell to his knees and asked his wife to pray with him. Why? Because he got saved. Amen. He got saved. And he wrote the case for Christ. The person that wrote that book and made that movie was an atheist. But Jesus said what? If you seek for me, you'll find me. When you seek for me with your whole heart. He was wholeheartedly seeking because he wanted to get his wife out of that mess. But what happened was he got converted. Because he learned that Jesus was real, he did die on the cross, yes. and he did rise again. Amen. And he's saved today. Amen. Amen. True fact. Lee Strobel is his name. So he said, but the, you know, so we have to come to church. The church is a learning institution, just like your secular school. 
You come to church to learn the word of God. Amen. It's amazing to me how we will pay good money to learn man's word. Which really has very little benefit. Amen. When we can learn the word of God, it has benefits in this life and the life to come. Yes, Lord. Amen. Because what he said, what does it profit a man to do what? Gain the whole world and lose your own soul. Why? Because you're not taking none, nothing in this world that's going with us. So Jesus knows that the heart of the matter, the heart of the problem here in this earth is a matter of the heart. Amen. It has nothing to do with anything else but the center of our being. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? He knows that we, at our best, we're a complete mess. Amen. 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 And, and when you get angry, even as a Christian, even as a born-again believer, when you get angry, you still remember those professional words. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you can't really express yourself the way you want to. Mm -hmm. So you go revert back to some of those <laughs> professional words I call them. Amen. Amen. But we, 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 we want to abstain from that. Amen. No, we're not perfect. No, we're not what we need to be. Amen. But I thank God we're not what we used to be. Amen. Amen. That's because we're learning the word of God. We have to learn the word of God. Yeah. So Jesus is telling them, you guys... There's four different types of heart. What kind of heart do you have? Mm. And right now he's talking about a hard heart. Mm. So he said when that seed fell by the wayside, mm. it was like a, a concrete. Mm. And so what happened was it just sit on top. Why? It couldn't penetrate. Mm. Right. Why? Because his heart is too hard. Mm. Amen. And he said so the birds, the fowls of the air came and, and plucked it up, right? right? The fowls of the air is the devil. The enemy came and snatched it out of your heart. Listen, I'm, I'm going to read it for you because it's in verse 19. Jesus explains that the seed sown, look, on the path represents one of four hearts. Listen, I'm going to read this for you. I told you the path has what? Foot traffic, wheel traffic, you know, hoof traffic, right? It's like concrete, is that right? Okay, look at what happens. The soil represents a hard heart. Mm -hmm. This is a person who repeatedly tunes God out. They tune God out. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly. They can sit in sermons. They can sit on the worst praise and worship. They can go to Sunday school. It doesn't matter. And they don't move them. Yeah. Why? Because their heart is too hard. It's just like the wayside. The seed. The seed is being planted, but it can't root. Amen. Is that right? Right. Amen. Amen. Listen. Every time that God speaks to you, I don't care if it's a sermon, Sunday school, an incident, an accident, okay, uh, et cetera, whatever it is, and you refuse to listen. Because hmm. here's a refusal. We refuse to listen our hearts. Get a little harder every time. Yes. And and listen, if you're not careful, what will happen is the Bible causes your heart being seared with a hot iron. Mm. It'll get you know if you get a skin seared or something, why? It it, it dies mm -hmm. and there's no filling in. Right. If you're not careful, you will no longer be able to hear God speaking to you. Mm. Okay. Amen. That's not a good thing. Amen. 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 So if you are here or you online, this or whatever it is, and you have any inkling that God has been trying to get your attention, He's been calling you. He's trying. He's trying to save your soul. Yes, He is. Amen. Amen. And if that's you today, you need to please not harden your heart. Amen. Amen. Because that is the only sin I told you in Sunday school. That is the only sin that you will not be forgiven for. Amen. Why? Because you won't ask for it. Right. See, a lot of people in the world think they're saved, so they don't see a re reason to repent. What did I do? I didn't do nothing. Why do I need to repent? Because the Bible says that you were born in sin and shaped Amen. in iniquity. Amen. You were born separated from God. We need to be born again so Amen. he can regenerate us. We need to be regenerated, converted into Amen. the image of his son. But when you refuse to respond over and over and over again, eventually you won't hear him anymore. Mm -hmm. Don't let that happen to you. Amen. 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 
Let, let me read uh, a scripture, Hebrews 4 and 7. See, this happened to the Israelites when, when Moses led them out of Egypt. See, they had hard hearts. They didn't want to believe God. Amen. And, 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 and in Hebrews 4 and 7, it says, again, he lamented, which means he's grieved. God was grieved again. And said, a certain day in David, and today after so long a time, as it is said today, if you hear my voice, yes. harden not yes. your heart. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because that's the accepted day. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6 and 1 tells you that's the accepted day. And that's the day of your salvation. You say, well, Pastor, that's not, it's not that I'm hardening my heart. I'm just not ready. I just don't feel like I'm ready to, to, to let go and let God. I'm not ready to give up what I have. I'm not ready. Okay. Well, you're not promised tomorrow. Amen. Amen. And we're not promised that he's going to call on us. See, he's drawing on us. The Bible said that no one can come to the Son unless the Father draws. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, he's drawing you. He's, he, he gave everybody an opportunity. Yeah. He did it for me. Yeah. He, he does it for everybody. Yeah. He said, I'm, I'm just trying to get your soul saved. Amen. Amen. Because I know you don't know better. But ignorance is not going to be an excuse for the law. Amen. Amen. Everyone born in the Spirit of God is going to heaven. Why? They're not going to be, their sins will not be able to condemn them. Thank Why? Because they've been paid for on that cross. Amen. Amen. And you say, well, that means if you get saved, you can do whatever you want. No, that's not what that means. Don't try to do that. Because once God becomes responsible for you, he said that he chasing the ones he loved and every son he received, he rebuked. Amen. Amen. He will beat you down. If he becomes your father, he's responsible, and he will get you there if he has to kill you to do it. Amen. 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 But when, when we harden our heart, okay, we won't hear God. Amen. Amen. So if he's drawing you to get right with him, all he's trying to do is get you to get right with him. I know, because I was there. Amen. Amen. And then... He'll accept you. He'll receive you. As long as you have breath in your body and you haven't been turned over to a reprobate mind. Some people have been turned over to a reprobate mind, which means they're depraved. They can't be saved in this world or the next. It doesn't matter. They're just waiting to die and be lost. Why? Because they, God already knows with their heart. He already knows they're, they're going to continue to lead people astray. Amen. They, they choose to serve the devil. So he said that kind of person. Mm -mm. But in 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. Did you get that up there? 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. You look at it. Amen. Says, we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. People say, I'm saved by grace. You're not saved by grace. No. Nope. <laughs> the Bible says we're saved by grace through faith. If you don't have faith, the grace can't do nothing for you. Amen. See, his part is the grace. Mm -hmm. Our part is faith. Amen. That's why the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. Amen. So we're saved by grace through faith. That grace is not by itself. That grace gives you the opportunity to be saved. Amen. Anybody. But you have to receive it by faith. Amen. Verse 2 says, For he says, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Yes. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Why? Because you're not promised tomorrow. Amen. We keep putting off for tomorrow. Tomorrow may not never get here for some. Some, everybody died and didn't see a tomorrow. Amen. Everybody who died didn't see a tomorrow. Amen. Whenever it was. Amen. So he said, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Amen. For Amen. that is the accepted time. That's the day of your salvation. Amen. Don't put it off. Don't procrastinate. Amen. 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 So that's that's a hard heart. That, that's that seed falling on the wayside. Let me read. Uh, 18 and 19 for you where Jesus explains the parable to them. And he tells them when they go and ask him. And, 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 and verse 19 says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, word of God, and understandeth it not, 
Then cometh the wicked one, the fowls of the air, the wicked one, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. They heard it. Uh -huh. Amen. But it, but it was on hard heart. It was on hard soil. It, it didn't penetrate. Therefore, it didn't make an impact Amen. on their life. Come on. Amen. 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 This is he which receives the seed by the wayside. Mm -hmm. You see that? Then he has one here. <coughs> one more. I'll give you one more. And it's called the superficial heart. So there's a hard heart. The second one is a superficial heart. Amen. And that was verses uh, 5 and 6 when he said, and, and some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no, what, deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. You know what superficial means, don't you? Amen. Shallow. Oh, yeah. You know, you just going along and get along, playing a game. You know what I mean? They were coming to Jesus to be healed physically. And at one point, he left them and told them, I'm, not, I'm done. He said, because you, you, you guys are missing the point. I can heal you physically. You think that's a miracle. That's not a miracle. Why? Because you're going to die and go to hell. Amen. I have not saved your soul. You've just been giving your sight back. You just can walk again. You can speak again, whatever. Okay? You know what a miracle is? A miracle is when someone accepts Jesus Christ in their heart. Amen. And their soul is saved. Amen. Amen. Because now the Bible says they will never die. Amen. Not spiritually. They'll live forever. Amen. Amen. So he, he, he told them, you, you guys are missing the point. I didn't come just to heal your body. I came to save your soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see what I'm saying? And he, he departed from them. And when he went to his own hometown, they didn't even believe he was. They said, isn't this uh, Mary and Joseph's son? That's why I said a prophet is not uh, accepted in his own home. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they, they feel that familiarity breeds contempt. Amen. If you know what I used to be, I probably can't tell you nothing right now. Because you're not going to accept the fact that I'm not that person anymore. Mm -hmm. But you've been, you've been changed. Is that right? Yeah. But I, you know, I don't really want to get into this second one yet. The superficial one. I want to keep that hanging on you so you'll be here next Sunday. Yeah. To understand. <laughs> Amen. And who is a good one? I'll tell you what. It's a good insight on that. Uh, because it's the cares of this world and things that we are so concerned about outweigh, okay, our response to God. Amen. When Jesus said that all we had to do, if we want everything, he said there's nothing that he will withhold from us. Thank you. Nothing. Amen. It's just like you having two children. Mm. One is a really good boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he gets straight A's, honorable student, just a blessing. Uh, he makes you look good no matter where he goes. You'll buy him anything. Is that right? You'll get anything for him. If he asks for it, you'll get it. Why? Because you say he is a good boy. Amen. And I don't mind spending my money on him because he deserves it. I mean, he's been a good boy, right? Amen. But then you got that infidel. <laughs> you got that other son. <laughs> and he's been causing you havoc your whole life. You know, every time you look around, he's in trouble and you're embarrassed and he's doing something that oh, you're like, you wasn't raised like this. Why are you doing this? You're a reflection of us. Why are you doing this, right? And he said, Mom, Dad, I want you to buy me a brand new Mercedes. <laughs> Even if you got the money. <laughs> he's not getting no Mercedes unless he go steal one. Because you're not buying it for him. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> That's how that works. So God is saying, as obedient children of God, of his, yes. he says nothing I withhold from you. Right. He right. said, all you got to do is ask, yes. and I'll give it to you. Yes, he will. Right? Ask, and you'll receive. Amen. Seek, and you'll find it. He yes. said, knock, and I'll open the door. Yes. He said, I'll open doors that no man can shut. Thank you, right? And I'll shut doors that no man can open. Amen. Right? 
But he said, I'll lead you in the right path for your life. But I need you to trust me. And so he said, listen, these people's heart is not right. Why? Because he said in uh, Proverbs 5, uh, yeah, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he said, we got to trust in the Lord. What? With all our heart. Right? And lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Amen. How are you going to trust in a God that you don't know? Come on. We don't trust nobody we don't know. You going to leave your kids with somebody you don't know? No. But now if you've been grew up with them and you know their friend, you know their character, right? You'll send your kids over there and you know that they're going to take care of them. You're not worried about them. Same thing with God. If you don't know him, and if you don't know his word, you don't know him. Why? Because God is the word. Amen. Amen. The word is God. He said, if you want to get to know me, pick up this book. Why? He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yes. For I'm meek and lowly of heart. You see what I'm saying? That's what he said. Amen. Amen. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Amen. What he's saying, yoke up with me. Amen. And you'll, Amen. you'll get to know me. And as you get to know me, you'll learn to what? Trust me. Amen. Right? And as you learn to trust me, as I bring you through storm after storm. Thank and you. as I bring you through, you know, you're praying and I'm bringing you through. He said, after a while, you're going to what? You're going to trust me. Yes. Amen. And now when you trust me, you can trust me with your whole heart. Why? Because yes. now your heart is right. Amen. That's what the word of God does. That's what he's talking about. Amen. Amen. But this superficial heart mm -hmm. fell on the rocky ground. Amen. Wasn't much soil. And it said, a none, which means immediately, right. they spring up. And since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they scorched. Mm -hmm. And since they had no root, they withered away and died. Amen. 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 Y'all. He explains that someone who hears God's word, they immediately receive it mm -hmm. and get caught up in their emotions. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes the spirit will be so high, you'll get an emotional high. Mm -hmm. You're right, you'll go into an emotional frenzy. Right? And you, yeah, and you, you feel the spirit, you got it, you want it, but guess what? It's superficial. Amen. Amen. But they don't allow the word to take root. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And that kind of heart endures for a while. But if you read verse 20, they endure for a while, but it says that the cares of this world, okay, they become offended. Why? Because now when you become born in the Spirit of God, when you become saved, you don't have to worry about getting away from the world. The world is going to get away from you. Yep, they will. Because while they're trying to drink and get high, you're killing their high. Because you're talking about Jesus. Don't nobody want to hear about Jesus when they're trying to get high, okay? They're telling you to save it for Sunday. I don't want to hear it. We're trying to get high, okay? Okay? So you ain't got to worry. You, you can't keep hanging with them. Because why? Because you're not like them anymore. You've been changed. Amen. Okay? You're in the world, but you're no longer of the world. Yes. They still in the world and of the world, right? And you, what did he say? A little leaven leavens a whole lump. Bad company corrupts good morals. So they're gonna get to the point where you don't have you can keep coming around, they're gonna keep avoiding it. They're gonna go somewhere, oh Lord, he didn't came. Lord. Put put the put the put the dope up. Amen. Amen. Put the dope up. Uh, yeah, what do you want? What do you want? Amen. I, I know, because I've been there. I know how it is. And, and you know, I used to my friends would have a little party. They wouldn't invite me. <laughs> but I knew about it. So I would show up. And you should see them. Some of them put cigarettes in their mouth. I'm like, I don't care if you're smoking. You should about to burn your tongue off. You didn't put the cigarette in your mouth and smoke coming all out your nose. <laughs> Man, what is wrong with you? I said, I'm only here for a minute. I'm going to leave so you guys can go on and get your groove on. Don't worry about it. I, just you being there just kills it. <laughs> Yeah, they, they can't do it. They can't do it. Amen. 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 That's why they like those pastors who drink and smoke with them. <laughs> but you have no witness. 
Right. They, they, they ain't going to come to you. If they need a prayer through, they're not calling you. Right. They're going to call other pastors that don't drink. <laughs> they're going to be like, you, you're not real. Amen. 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 You play, you play pastor. Amen. You play pastor. Amen. <laughs> but if you look at verse 20, and I'm going to close with this one because there's two more kinds of hearts. Amen. Now, I'm going to go and give it to you. I ain't going to let you leave your hand. Amen. Amen. Yet, look at this. But he that receiveth the seed in the stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon, which means immediately, immediately with joy receives it. Amen. They receive it. They're serious about it. Amen. Yet has he not root in himself. But during, look, for a while, he, for a while, he, he's, he's hanging with you. He's going to Sunday school and Bible study. For a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises. Now he's being ostracized by his friends. They don't really want him around anymore. He's being persecuted. He's being called a holy roller. He's, you know, holier than thou. We, you know, now that arises, that persecution because of the word. Because of the word. Mm -hmm. See, you can't have it both ways. No, you can't. Amen. Amen. By and by, he is what? Offended. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? He's offended. And because he's offended, he reverts back to what he was. Why? Because he wants, he's more interested in being accepted. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like we call it peer pressure, mm -hmm. young men. Mm -hmm. If you're going to serve God, serve God, you can't be worried about what your friends think. Amen. Amen. Because no. God before you. Who or what can be against you? Don't worry about it. But you can't. He said, if you deny me before man, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. He said, if, if you're ashamed of me before man, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to give you a little more on that, on that superficial, but we're going to stop. Because I think you got enough right now to deal with and go home and talk about and, and get the scripture and follow up on this. Say, man, I, I read that scripture. I, I heard it before, but now I understand Amen. what he, Jesus is talking about. Amen. 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 And the heart of the matter is a matter Amen. of the heart. Amen. So when he, yeah, you can stop all this outside stuff. He said, no, I got to get you right on the inside. Because <laughs> so if I get you right on the inside, it will what? Eventually sure. manifest itself on the But it will be real. Yes. It will be real. And so, you know, uh, like I said, the title of the message is what? What kind of heart do you have? God bless you. May God bless you. Amen. And with that, I'm going to give, a, we're standing because we're getting ready to close out. But I want to give, I never end a message without giving those in attendance and those online an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. and said, praise the Lord and save you. Why? Because this is all about salvation. So if that's you today, you're here today, you heard the voice of God, and you want to accept him into your heart, you want to repent, you just don't want to be lost. According to the Bible, Romans 10, 9 and 10, he said it's real simple. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, not your head. A lot of people in the world got head belief. That's not going to get you saved. you got to believe it in your heart. Why? Because when you believe something in your heart, it changes your life. Yes, See, it changes who you are. Amen. He said, if you believe in your heart, right? He said, thou shalt be saved. You Amen. see that? But with the heart, with the heart, one believes on the righteousness. Yes. Not with the mind. Right? And with the tongue, salvation is made. Amen. The mouth is confessed. Amen. So if that's you today, all you got to do is repeat after me the simple prayer. Father God, I'm a sinner, and I've sinned against you. I repent of my sins, and I ask that you forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus. Father God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten son. I believe that he died on that cross for my sins. I believe that he was dead and buried, and on the third day, you raise him from the dead. I believe, Father God, according to the Holy Scripture, that if I die believing in you, in my heart, that you will raise me from the dead.
So, Father God, I invite you to my heart. Holy Spirit, I give you control of my life. And I ask that you save my soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. According to the word of God, not me. This, this, is, this is the word of God. If you made that humble confession and you repented of your sins and you believe in your heart, you've been born again. Jesus said he'll come on the inside. You may not feel different. You may not look different. But if that change, if he, if you've been converted in your heart, eventually, God will change your want to. You'll begin to stop doing certain things and you'll start doing other things Amen. that pertain to God. Amen. And people will say, well, what happened? You say, you know what? I just don't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what conversion means. You'll no longer avoid the word of God. You'll no longer avoid the church, but you will draw to God. Why? Because you will hunger and thirst after righteousness. Yeah. Amen. And if that's you today, God bless you. And, and if you find online, find your good Bible teaching church, which is few today. We've got a lot of motivational speakers, but no one preaching the raw gospel. Or you can go to solidrockministrieslb.org and we'll be glad to help you in your new walk, your new life in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. Amen.